Even though it may produce outstanding color reproduction and a clear image, this monitor is not the most cutting-edge one available. It misses some of the premium features that Apple frequently highlights as significant selling points in products like the iPad Pro 12.9-inch, for example. This is also far more expensive than many of the top monitors available, with a price beginning at $1,599, so, how excellent is it exactly? One of the many benefits of choosing the Apple Studio display over a less expensive monitor is its distinctively Apple appearance. This is among the most svelte displays available, with a very polished appearance that undoubtedly draws inspiration from the iMac 2021 revamp. Although there are no colors available that are as vibrant as those on the iMac, the basic combination of a black front and silver sides looks fantastic. The studio display most obviously shares the basic stand with the iMac. Contrary to the Pro Display XDR, you are not need to pay more only to have a stand included in the package, but, if you do have additional funds, you can splurge on a more practical one. The studio display by default includes a straightforward tilt stand that closely resembles the stand from the M1 iMac. There is no height adjustment, but it tilts up and down, so you can alter the angle up to 30 degrees if you're attempting to minimize glare. Similar to the iMac, the studio display's height at my desk is a little low, which may make it unpleasant for the duration of a long work week. In order to give the stand some additional height, I ultimately stacked a few books underneath it. Apple does provide two additional stand choices. For an additional $400, you can have some height adjustments and a stand that closely resembles the Pro Display XDR. You can't merely choose the tilt option with the intention of upgrading yourself at home later, according to Apple, who also claims that these stands aren't readily user-replaceable. But they are exchangeable at Apple outlets. Although the height-adjustable stand improves the experience overall, I haven't tried it thus I can't vouch for its improvements. However, the upsell price is a little too steep to suggest it. The studio display is finished with the level of quality that you would anticipate from a monitor of this price. The aluminum appearance is an improvement above the competition's typical plastic construction, and it has the precision touch we've come to expect from Apple devices like the iPhone 13 Pro. However, it is really bothersome since the monitor has no controls at all. Nothing, not even an on-off switch or dial for fast-changing settings. A laptop that is connected to the system controls everything. This doesn't affect the Mac experience as you can control anything from the keyboard or system preferences, but it detracts from the Windows experience because you can't truly change or adjust any settings. The Apple Studio display is one of the more fully equipped monitors we've evaluated because it has a lot going on within. There is an integrated webcam top-notch speakers and what amounts to the basic iPad's internals, including an A13 Bionic chipset and 64 gigs of storage. Though you wouldn't really know there is internal storage and a fairly capable chip inside, don't get overly thrilled about those specs. For example, you cannot store files on the Apple Studio display or use AirPlay to stream straight to it. It appears that these internal components are instead there to support software updates and enable supplementary features like spatial audio for the speakers and center stage for the cams. Since the studio display's release, the built-in webcam has generated a lot of controversy, with several reviews decrying its loud hazy image. Although the camera in this location is only passable, after using it for daily video calls, I can't claim that it has annoyed me. The results are excellent when compared to the majority of laptop webcams. However, I'm not as impressed with the center stage feature and think an iPad would be a much better option. The wide-angle camera is used by this software function to effectively track you while zooming in and out to try to maintain you in the center of the picture. Positively, the speakers are excellent. The audio has a good balance of bass and spatial audio, and it is clean and sharp. Four force-canceling woofers and two high-performance tweeters make up the total of six speakers. Although there isn't quite enough bass to make it a wonderful monitor for audio listening, it is great for watching movies and TV programming. I watched the Apple TV Plus program Foundation, and the monitor accurately portrayed the show's thunderous audio. Although speakers are often included in monitors only to check a box, they feel like a crucial component in this case. The accompanying 1-meter Thunderbolt cable is required to connect a device to the display, all you need to do is plug it into a Thunderbolt port on your MacBook to get started. With a laptop, you may charge it up to 96 watts and connect peripherals to it via any of the four rear ports, three USB-C, and one Thunderbolt 3. One wire is all you need, so everything is incredibly simple and leaves your desk tidy. 
With the 2020 MacBook Pro, I've had no issues at all utilizing the Apple Studio display, it boots up without a hitch each time I bring the laptop in. The picture quality of the Apple Studio display has both impressed and disappointed me. Overall, it's a wonderful LCD panel with a sharp 5K resolution that scales up macOS nicely and outputs a vibrant colorful image that performed extremely well in our tests. But it doesn't really do anything novel, distinctive, or really contemporary. This display is essentially identical to the 27-inch LG Ultrafine monitor and the 27-inch 5K iMac, two options that have been available for a while. For real HDR, neither local dimming nor mini-LED technology exist, nor are XDR brightness levels available for some applications. Additionally, there isn't 120Hz Pro Motion technology, so you're stuck with the standard 60Hz refresh rate, which is undoubtedly unappealing to gamers. I put up a couple shows on Netflix and Apple TV Plus to check how the entertainment experience was. The 5K resolution produced a highly clear image with vibrant colors and excellent brightness levels, although the absence of local dimming makes dark images appear more washed out. Watching an episode of Severance on both a monitor and my iPad Pro 12.9 inch with its mini LED screen side by side produced a much brighter and more vivid image. If you're not viewing HDR video, Apple claims the studio display can reach 600 nits of brightness, which is a significant amount. My findings after using a calorimeter on the panel agreed with Apple's assertion. Apple has previously offered a few different last finish options, and you can do the same here. Anyone who has used an iMac or MacBook will be familiar with the glossy surface that glass has by default. You can swap to the Nano Texture Glass for an additional 250 pounds. If you're working in a particularly bright environment and directly in front of a window, this improvement may be beneficial, according to Apple, as it scatters light to further limit glare. But overall, the panel is strong. Because of its high resolution, macOS scales up incredibly well, giving everything a sense of proportion and producing sharp images no matter what you're doing. It's only unfortunate that certain more sophisticated functions aren't offered, and that an HDR-capable panel isn't available. It's an excellent all-in-one display solution that integrates beautifully with the Apple ecosystem, looks fantastic, and offers a powerful and true color image. However, I believe that anyone other than the most ardent Apple supporters, who must have that usability in 5K resolution, would find it difficult to suggest it. Even while the high asking price is somewhat less than the Pro Display XDR, it is still exorbitant, given that the screen was just removed from an old iMac. Both the absence of ProMotion and the lack of any local dimming support for HDR in any form are regrettable. This is not going to compete with the top gaming monitors, nor is it particularly appropriate for Windows PC consumers. No, this is a specialty monitor for a MacBook Pro owner who is unconcerned with price. If that describes you, investing more money in the Studio Display XDR is the only way to get better. What do you think of the new monitor? Write your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and see you soon.